Pascal's principle. This is a principle that, that governs hydro hydraulic presses. So here's the idea. Any change in the pressure applied to a completely enclosed fluid. So I've got a fluid everywhere inside of here. No air bubbles, no nothing. Just like you want in your, in your um, power brake lines, you don't want any air bubbles in there. And you've got a disc up here, so it's capped on this side and it's capped on this side. This is called the piston. And so if we push down on here, then that push will increase the pressure at that spot. But that increase in pressure will translate into all of the fluid and increase the pressure throughout the fluid. You say, well, hang on. Isn't the pressure up here greater than the pressure down here? Yes, and it still is. Um, but we're going to increase both of these pressures by the same amount. So any change in the pressure applied to a completely enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished to all parts of the fluid in the enclosing walls. So here's the idea. If I have a, a piston here with a small area, so I'm going to imagine lifting a large object here on this end by pushing on this small end. If I can exert a force and increase the pressure here, then we know that pressure at point P1 here is the force that I'm applying on this piston to, to, uh, to um, cause my brake shoes to come in contact with the, with the wheels, for example, in, in your brake system of your car. Um, pressure is force per unit area on the left side, but over on the right side, the pressure over here is this force per unit area. If we multiply both sides by area A1, we get this equation. And let's suppose that I want to lift a car up, as we'll talk about in the next slide. So this force here, F2, to lift the car over here is going to be a pretty good sized force. Well, how much force do I have to push with over here on the small side with the piston? The answer is given by the ratio of the two areas. So A1, here's this area, it's smaller than A2. So I can lift a big object as long as this area difference is, is large with a very small force. So let me just do the calculation. The input piston of a hydraulic car lift has negligible mass and radius of 0.012 meters. So that's about 1.2, well it is 1.2 centimeters. So that's the piston here, A1. And the output plunger, so this is the plunger, has a radius of 0.15 meters. So that's uh, 15 centimeters. The combined weight of the car plunger and platform is 20,000 newtons. So that's this whole weight here, 4,600 pounds, that's a lot of weight. With the bottom surfaces of the piston and plunger at the same level, so we're talking about these two surfaces um, being at the same level, so which is, that's not actually shown here. <laughs> um, so this, for this uh, particular problem, this piston would have to be right down here for the bottoms of those to be at the same place. So that means that the pressure here is the same as pressure here. So um, how much force do we have to uh, do with at the input piston? Well, uh, here's F2, the force uh, necessary to hold up the plunger in the car and the, and then the areas are pi r squared because they're, they're disks pi times the area of the piston, 0.012, pi times the area of the um, plunger. Um, so it's just 131 newtons or about 30 pounds. No big deal. So with just a, a small amount of pressure, 
that pressure translates into this bigger area and creates a much bigger force. It's a very powerful um, principle that's used all the time. For example, in, in construction equipment, this is, uh, this is a hydraulic system that just you need a tiny little input and you're pushing not very hard on that input but that that higher pressure gets spread over a larger area and can lift a huge amount of weight also on um, um, hydraulic um, to lift up your your dump truck 